I came by ending explained. This Netflix movie was something that I certainly didn't expect. The thriller set in London where two individuals had a famous tag that they would spray onto rich people's houses after they'd broken into them which read as I came by took a dark and sinister turn when one tried to break into Sir Hector Blake's house. A retired individual high up in law enforcement who had a secret that he didn't want anybody to know about so I thought I'd review, break down and explain all that there was to take away from this movie. So let's get into it. Here is I came by ending explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. We saw this movie open up with Toby and Jay who were the graffiti artists who were the ones going around and tagging the rich people's houses. We saw from the off that there was a motive behind their actions. They both didn't come from the most financially stable backgrounds and prejudice was something that was apparent. And we visually saw Toby give a reason as to why they did what they did. We saw this at the train station where he witnessed a working professional looking down at a homeless individual and shaking their head at them. We saw Toby play out a scam where he took the gentleman's wallet and made out like he found it, which spared him to get a reward for saving the hassle of cancelling cards. With the man's money that he gave him, he put it inside of the homeless person's pot that he previously shook his head at, almost carrying out a Robin Hood mentality of robbing from the rich to give to the poor, ironing out his morals. We saw that Toby lived with his mother and he was without his father due to the fact that he died. This felt like it was one of the main reasons as to why Toby was going through a hard time and was acting out towards his mother, despite having good values. Jay on the other hand had a life that was heading in a slightly different direction. He was with a girl named Naz and she was pregnant with his child. So he decided to step away from the life of tagging and wanted a straight life where he could provide for his family. This is then where the tie into Hector Blake came into it. Jay was working a job where he entered his house and it was the next on their hit list after retrieving the Wi-Fi code. But with Jay now out of the picture, it led Toby to go and do it himself. When Toby first entered the house and made his way down to the basement, he stumbled across some images of Hector's past, his father's past, and the individual that we'd later come to learn about. Hector returned home due to the fact that he had a warning that his security systems had shut down, which led to a tense moment where Toby had to escape. But not before he looked through the peephole that was in Hector's basement and saw that there was an individual that was stuck in there. We witnessed Toby make an anonymous call in order to get the officers to go and search the house, but it yielded nothing, leading him to taking matters into his own hands. I thought two interesting things happened here. We saw the sheer amount of power Hector had due to his previous career in working in law enforcement and the close relationship he had with people that worked high up in the force and also the fact that he was watching Rick and Morty. I thought it showed a side that said how even he, a dark human with no morals, can find fulfillment and laughter in something that regular folk can. Showing that danger is ever so present and it can be from somebody that blends in and you're the least suspicious of. Once we saw Toby take things into his own hands, we saw him try and release the prisoner that Hector held captive. However, just like the first time, Hector returned and we then saw a plan B arise. We witnessed Toby planning on ambushing Hector whilst he was in the cell. However, he slipped and ultimately met his own demise at the hands of Hector. This was then when the second half of the movie got underway. We never really knew if Toby was dead or not, or if he was being held captive somewhere, but we saw an investigation get underway between his mother and the police to hone in on Hector, as there were a lot of suspicions around him as an individual. He tested the police and Lizzie on multiple occasions by being aware of the fact that they were onto him and either using his contacts in high power to release him from being held at the police station or to set up Lizzie so that she'd break into his house. This was where we also got to learn a little more about Sir Hector and why he was like the way that he was. We saw that he had a huge painting of his father on the wall and he was an individual who at first you thought he would have had a lot of respect for but it was revealed to us that he despised him. And I believe the painting being on the wall was there to add fuel to the fire and act as a way of keeping that rage inside of him, justifying his actions. When Hector was younger, his father had a young party helper called Ravi, who used to help out around the house. However, as time went on, Ravi ended up moving in and then sleeping with his father, which ultimately led his mother to becoming second best and end up taking herself. Along with this, Hector was sent to a boarding school where the burning rage inside of him towards Ravi was led to build up to the point where ultimately he ended up beating Ravi to the point where he thought he'd killed him. This was the first time he acted upon that anger and was the defining reason as to why he was murdering people now. 
to act out what he wished he could have done to his father, but also what he did to Ravi. In the time that we'd been watching the movie, we'd seen him murder the first individual, Toby, and then there was Omid, who Hector invited in and tried to make him his new prisoner. But he managed to escape and Lizzie was there watching the house, so he managed to get saved. But that didn't stop him getting manipulated and being killed. This was then when the climax of the movie started unfolding. We saw Hector place the keys inside of his gate which he knew that Lizzie would pick up and take to break in. Once this was done, we saw Hector battle with Lizzie, but ultimately lead her down to the cell where he told her that he flushed her son's ashes down the toilet, confirming what we saw at the start of the movie was him. He also stated that he was going to kill her, to which he did. A lot of time had passed throughout the movie and it did a great job in showing us this by using Jay's child's birth as the clock. Jay was now without Lizzie and Toby and Kaz for a while, as she'd left him due to him lying about everything that was going on. Hector had moved out of his house and after Jay broke into it, he saw the cell and realized that it was likely Hector who killed both Toby and Lizzie. Kaz knew where Hector was going to be due to the fact that somebody was going to be giving him her dissertation, which is what led Jay to patiently wait and follow Hector back to his new mansion, where it looked as though he'd started doing the same thing again. He had a new prisoner locked in a cell down below, just like he did in his previous house. We saw Hector sleeping in his childhood bed, even though there was a master suite that was unoccupied. This to me suggested that the time that he spent at the boarding school was his happy place, and he made his room the very thing that resembled that. His home life was disruptive and mentally challenging, and with the death of his mother and his father abandoning him, it was no longer his home. And that's why having the representation of a child's room, it transported him back. We saw Jay break into the place and a fight with Hector then erupted, where they both took some serious damage, but Jay managed to come off slightly better, managing to escape. Once that was done, he called the police and told them that there was a prisoner there as Jay discovered a new individual that he kept in his basement, showing that the cycle was still continuing and the deeper meaning of him keeping prisoners and torturing them was a way of channeling the resentment towards Ravi and showed us that it will be present throughout his entire life. However, once the police arrived, we saw that Hector was now restrained, and I think this could be interpreted in two different ways. It could be interpreted in the sense that Jay tied him up before departing, or it could be taken in the way that Hector had tied himself up to make it look like he'd been robbed and beaten as he stared blankly into the officer's eyes who he mocked earlier on, which showed that he could potentially worm his way out of this one. Money, power, and an arrogant nature, along with the idea that you can get away with what you want if you have those three things, are at the core of this movie, and the motivations of Hector. He's a smart individual, but an extremely troubled one that needed to be locked up. Us being left not knowing his outcome is something that makes the ending far more scary than if we saw him getting arrested, or finding out that he got away with it, because it's something we'll never know. We also had the tag on the wall, which I think can be taken in a couple of different ways as well. One is that Jay tagged the wall out of respect to Toby as a way of saying that he seeked revenge. Or it could just be seen as a way of putting up the title of the movie at the end of it, closing it off. I think it's up for interpretation. So, there you have it. I came by Ending Explained. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions and Character Breakdowns, then click on the I button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you want to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of this movie? Leave a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.